a Soulmates 5 panel, which is actually um, one of the very first diamond paintings I worked on. This I gave to my son for Christmas last year. It's been at my place because we haven't been able to work out how to frame it. And what I have ended up doing is working on the fact that possibly working with resin, doing UV resin, not UV resin, two part epoxy resin on this would be perfect. This is a square and it was paint with diamonds. <clears throat> Panels are, so that's a 50 by 30, 80 by 30, 100 by 30, 80 by 30, 100 by 30, uh, 80 by 30, 50 by 30. All right. Uh, very confetti heavy, very confetti heavy. For those guys that have done the smaller versions of this, um, just imagine it. If well, I mean, yeah, I think you guys can see like the sky, very confetti heavy. Um, yeah, so this is actually what you can see properly. The silhouette actually does look like he is on. He's, I don't know whether he is on his knees or whether he doesn't look like he's on his knees, but yeah. There is also in this detail, you can see there's an eye there. So yeah, just something you don't see in the bigger picture, but that is, that looks to me like an eye, or whether it's coincidental, I don't know. But yeah, soulmates. So it's this one here, which is what got me to start working with epoxy resin, two part epoxy resin, sorry for all the shaking. And so now today, I'm gonna start with the working with the UV with the resin I will show you the resin that I've used if you go through all my other videos previously you'll see where I've worked with resin I am going to be working on panel E and panel A first because those two I can fit on my craft table in one go um, B and C B and D these two panels I may be able to do in one go as well but as a the overall process is these will get three coats of resin each on them so this one will get a coat of resin three hours later a second coat and then three hours later the third coat so that is each process is going to take uh, so that one and that one six hours possibly looking at that one and that one so that'll be 12 18 hours if I can't get those two together at the, done at the same time it's going to take me 24 hours of pouring 24 hours of these guys being done I'm not going to be doing it all in one go so we'll be doing this panel and this panel first um, I might show you the process of all the panels I might just show you the process of these two panels and then the end result um, but you won't see this video until after Christmas because um, my son subscribes to the YouTube channel and I don't really want him to see this. So we'll get on with the process. Okay, so panel A and panel E, you will see that I still have the legends attached. That's so that um, if I find any missing drills, uh, if I find that I'm missing some drills, I will be able to um, replace them. Um, what I need to do is go through and brush this, look for any missing drills, and then this need the table that I've got them on will need to be level. I do have butcher's paper down, but I will be putting painter's tape down to protect the sides, or actually stop resin getting on the side so that when I cut it, um, it will be a clean, even cut. Um, but yeah, I'm going to level this up and I use my phone as a level so um, you won't see that process. When you do see the next process, it will be um, putting the resin together. Okay. Next steps. One is gloves. I have to wear gloves uh, with, uh, art, well you're supposed to use gloves with everything when you deal with resin, whether it's UV, two-part epoxy. I am a naughty person and I tend not to. 
But when I'm using big quantities like this, I know I'm going to get resin all over my hands. So I need to protect them because this is a, this can be a messy process. Putting on two sets of gloves because when I get through to, through all the mixing, I will find that I will need to take the glove off I'll take my gloves off and work with a plain set of gloves. I have tools for this measuring jug. Right, now this is all taped down, level. I have two pairs of gloves on, two, two sets of gloves on. And now to measure it out. Last time I worked on a resin, I did Baby Groot and he was only like a 35 by 40 I do, or a 30 by 40. I use 70 mil, 75 mils of each. And I'm gonna need actually a lot more than this. Um, 100, so I'm gonna need 300 mils of each um, of the resins. Instead of measuring them all out together, they're all out into different cups. I do have a big measuring cup and let measure out 300 of each straight into this cup and uh, go from there. So I am using, oops, yet again, art resin. I have marked them A and B so that I can easily identify them. Because once you start pouring resin, um, the bigger print on these just makes it so much easier. And because this is a messy process. Okay, so 300 mils. Which I'm not really happy with. I'm gonna go 350. Just to make sure. If it's too much, I can always, I don't know, Add some colour in and pour it into another mould. Oh, no, not quite 350. These are mixed equal parts by volume. And you do need to be pretty precise with them. Okay, that's got it. Which is why you generally measure part A and part B into cups and then into measuring jugs. I like to think that I'm possibly able to do this without any issue because um, I've done enough of resin work. So 350, I'm now up to the 700 mark. Right, Ooh. this requires, they say, with resin to mix it for a until it's clear. You do see that there is a bit cloudy. When I start mixing it, it will get cloudier. Art Resin actually, the company has a time of three minutes. There's a recommended time. So, hey Google, set timer, three minutes. Three minutes, starting now. Okay. And with resin, always make sure you scrape the bottom and your, layer, your, layer, your stirring stick to make sure that everything is mixed up. And um, I'll come back to you shortly. silicon baking mat you will see there is bubbles in this the bubbles will come out 
I have now I've got to pour it on both of these and I will push it through and while I'm pushing this around I will be making sure I watch for any drills that pop off um, I have a 45 minute work time here um, it won't take me 45 minutes but what I will do I'll start pouring and um, you guys can watch me do it quickly The resin does take the sparkle out and you can already see that the sparkle is gone. I, there's a couple of things you can do is just be happy with the end result. Because um, basically when you're giving something as a gift, they actually don't know the difference and that's not, rude, not being rude or, or mean or anything like that. But it's more like we do work, we work on our crafts and it never ends up being good enough in our own opinion because we know how much better something could be or rally run. We're always critical of our own work. But this is um, my son has seen me diamond paint, his girlfriend diamond paints, and he understands the amount of time it takes to do something. Um, so yeah, but this is what it looks like. I'm just trying to find you did see me using a flamethrower. Um, what you get in resin, some resins are really bad for it, some aren't. But what you get, if I can see, you get little bubbles that come up from the resin. And just that heat, the blowtorch on it, does actually pop those bubbles. Actually, there we go. I don't know whether you're seeing any bubbles popping or not. And I'm not focusing in any one order, it's all uh, playing it around. Now, what I can see is my table is not fully 100% level. You can only level so much, but this is running all the way down to the side. Yeah, this one is okay and this is not running to the side. I'm gonna have to get to that end and lift it up. And you will see that I've got rubbish on the floor over there. Okay, so I just need to rearrange these pyramids a little bit. Got painter's pyramids underneath and they are brilliant for leveling up stuff and paddle pop sticks also make a difference. Um, no, I'm going to have to use this. Put the resin back on and I'm going to watch to make sure it's still level. Because obviously this resin is self-leveling. As always is. Just put the 
torch on that. So I'll come back to this in about half an hour. And then we'll see how it's going. Let's see. Okay. Bing! Two hours. So the resin is on here and you can surely see the, the reflection from the window. But you see that? Yeah. They didn't stay down. I know I have one where I had to pick it up to sort it out and there it is there. I'm going to try and salvage it and what that takes is I'm going to have to wait until this sets, remove the edges and then re-resin over top of it but I'm going to have to create a ridge and actually do a high ridge, a raised edge so that then I can just fill it, backfill it. Um, yeah, so once this is set, I'll then trim the edges off and I'll do a solid resin pour. Um, yeah, you'll see how I do that. I'll do my first attempt at it. Um, I've got a rough idea what I'm doing, but not fully. Okay, see you shortly. Now, this has been five hours, four or five hours. What I'm gonna do now is lift the tape because I need this tape off for the next step. This will, in the main part, if I rub out, hang on. So this will actually peel off the resin that's on the outside of the diamond painting leaving the resin on where we want it to stay on. Now this is still soft, which gives me the ability to pull this away without affecting too much. Okay. And they are straight into the bin. What I will do is what softens the edges is I actually do heat the edge to soften it a bit. Okay. So, watch me go through this process. finish on, on that. I do need to do one more. There will be just the one more coat. I thought I'd need to do two. But what I need to do is I actually need to do a raised bed. I need the resin to go above that. Um, so, but there's still some bits that are too high. So I do actually need to do, make it raised around it. Um, but yeah, we'll come back to that shortly. But yes, there's a mirrored finish. <clears throat> the, re the resin does give it a mirrored finish. So I'm back shortly for the next steps. Right, you're at a small lower angle now. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Next steps, I'm actually gonna cut. So this is still, um, best way to show this is from here. So this is still sticky but it's reasonably firm. I'm gonna cut the edges off of this. And uh, we're working from it without the sides on it any further.
one. How do we the way these came out? Um, trying to find, actually, you can probably see it there. See how that's raised? And this one is raised in the same spot, although you can't see it as much. So what I have done is I've actually created frames around with um, painter's tape. And the aim is to pour a, a layer that will solve the issue of the raised drills and give this an even frame. Next step from here, going to do only like 400 mils of resin. I believe that should be enough without going too heavy. And um, yeah, we'll see how we go from there. So part B, 200 mils. <laughs> half in here the other half and the other one and let that there to drain out right you now it's just a case of doing the um, actually easy side of things, which is spreading this out and just keeping an eye, make sure it doesn't leak. Just spread it all the way out. It's not a thick layer. But I need to make sure it goes all the way around the edges. I don't believe it will run out the sides. I've got it fairly well taped. But definitely need to make sure it goes everywhere. Very edges. simpler than the other way um, so yeah we'll uh, I'll come back and check the resin in about half an hour make sure everything's still sitting nicely and pop any bubbles that may have risen to the surface so I've taken one edge off there's the uh, tape so what I could do is take the rest off so this is where um, it's as I want it to be I will flip you around and you can watch me cut the tape off. Still have got a bit of a raised bit up there. 
but this is it um, still got that's at the back I can sort that out but because the resin was wet well not wet but it was soft I was still able to cut down the sides so you can see a bit of um light hang on let's see if I can I'll switch let's see a bit more reflection off it so you can see the high gloss on that Hopefully I'm not making you seasick. So what I'm going to do with this one, I think I'm going to have to leave this set for another half an hour or so, and then I'll come back to it. Okay, so part E, part A. Let's get part A out of wraps and um, speed this up. use the knife now this has got uh where are we going this has got resin on it and the resin is still pliable which means i'm still able to cut it which is why you need to watch your timing if i had left this probably another half an hour i wouldn't have been able to do that cutting but i'll get back to it <laughs> actually just see the shine. I've just put in a cardboard box so that I can move these and keep these level. Um, I don't know how much of a shine you can see on that but there's a great deal of shine on that. That looks stunning. Um, so this is part one. You will get another couple of parts to about this. Um, but yeah this is putting two part epoxy resin on a diamond painting. Yes the Sparkle has gone, but for the type of picture that this is, the effect is still there, and you will see it in the final video. So long as everything goes well. <laughs> um, so, guys, if you got, got any comments, throw me any comments, any suggestions. Um, a lot of it was I, the initial work with this one was as what's worked with from me previously, and then I've gone, heck, that's not working. I've got to try something else. Um, and I think I found a better way to do it. Um, but yeah, that is it. So yeah, leave me a comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And uh, hit the bell to be notified when uh, I upload something new, i.e. part two of uh, this work. And uh, bye for now.